Well, this school seeks to give the next generation of Filipino programmers and digital artists a boost with technology-driven courses. We talk about learning innovation amid the digital era with CIIT College of Arts and Technology President Sherwin O. Oh. Sherwin, great to have you with us. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Richard. Well, technology-driven courses are really now front and yeah. center with ChatGPT, artificial intelligence, the Internet of Things, now becoming so popular among everybody. Yeah, definitely. Um, technology, I think the, the level of awareness of Filipinos when it comes to technology just rapidly rose. Uh, I think you know, pre-pandemic, uh, technology was already starting to spread around particularly digital arts. I think um, when we look at society, uh, back then, you know, Filipino, parang malakas yung kasabihan na walang pera sa arts, no? something like that. That's right. But then with digital arts coming along, you start, you start exposing the young ones, even the older generation to YouTube, to Facebook, mm -hmm. you know, to all these media. And then they start to realize that everything they touch, you know, even their cell phones, everything is um, impacted by digital arts and technology. So I think that, that really just paved the way for massive awareness when it comes to tech. When I graduated in uh, the late 1980s, yeah. I mean, there were already courses yeah. when it came to computer programming, computer yeah. science. There was also mechanical engineering, industrial engineering, yeah. electronic uh, engineering. But how do these courses, compared to your courses, close that gap in technology? Yeah, so I think um, uh, back then, uh, in the 80s and 90s, you know, <laughs> during those era, I think uh, Philippine society just generally understood um, all the technology courses as to, you know, anything to do with the computer that would really be technology. But, you know, as the years progressed, you know, um, 2010, uh, 2010, 2020, you know, decades onwards, people now get to really distinguish the different functions of technology, particularly computer science and programming, mm. which really gained a lot of ubiquity with, uh, you know, uh, platforms like um, Facebook particularly, you know, with the movie of the story of Mark Zuckerberg coming out, how people uh, all over the world are just developing their own apps, you know, turning yeah. into multimillionaires, multi-billionaires even. You don't even have to be a college graduate. Correct, you can correct. be a high school dropout yeah. and become a billionaire, correct. just like Steve Jobs. Correct. And the messaging really was, you know, all it took was an idea, a business idea or a concept, you know, a problem in the world that you could actually solve. Create the technology, create the app, create the software. And I think that really made people very aware now, oh, okay, this is the power of technology and made, made more uh, students interested in pursuing these courses. So what digitally transformative programs does your school offer to basically bridge the gaps between the 80s, the 90s, yeah. the new uh, millennium and today's generation? So, um, well, CIT was really founded with a, by our chairman of the board, um, Niel de Gondon. He's really a Filipino who started the first ever game development company mm -hmm. in the Philippines. And early on um, in growing the company, the major roadblock that he experienced was just a lack of talent. You, know? you couldn't really find people who could program, make the games, make the applications that the company was hoping to create. And so the idea of you know, coming up with the school that really has a hyper focus on making sure the graduates are industry ready, particularly when it comes to specialized programs in digital arts, tech, and as late as technopreneurship. Mm. You know, these three courses, um, there is a vision of bringing together under one roof, digital artists, UI, UX, front end, basically, animators, 2D, 3D, bring them to, uh, bring, have them work together with um, software programmers, app developers, you know. And then finally, bring in the technopreneurs, people who can create ideas um, to create this sort of a Silicon Valley ecosystem, mm -hmm. you know, something like that. Just bringing all these three expertise together under, under one roof. And this academic program, especially the learning innovation, can really impact our country's economic development and growth going forward. Because we've seen over the past uh, two years during the pandemic yeah. how technology-driven uh, pros the process really shot through the roof. Yeah, uh, I think all of us you know, would have to concede how the pandemic just really pushed everyone in terms of innovating. Mm. Um, innovating in a sense of one's ability to use whatever technology was made available you know, during that time. Because as far as the economy was concerned, it was really on free fall. 
it was really up to these organizations, no matter how small or how big, from various industry, whether you're a hotel, an airline, a school, even, all of these, you really have to adapt. And I think with the way forward, uh, if there was really one insight I'd like to bring in, is how I hope everyone realized how tech is also a massive equalizer. Mm -hmm. You know, it easily bridges the gap between people with access to resources and not, you know. We're a very young school, we're only 15 years old, relatively very young for a college, but we've also leveraged heavily on technology to allow us to close the gap. You talk about technology, what kind of hardware, software uh, are you using in teaching these new next level courses? Yeah, so the approach of the school ever since uh, we started was really working closely with our company partners. We have this um, unique policy where students are not really allowed to take their internship in just any company. Mm -hmm. You're limited to CAIT, company partners. And we are lucky hand enough- Hand-picked partners. Hand-picked partners. Mm -hmm. um, and we are lucky enough for these company partners to voluntarily sit down with us every year, review the curriculum, let us know what you're using, let us know the latest trends, the practices, let us know even the size of the table that you mm -hmm. use, you know, what hardware you're using, what software you're using, and in turn, the school's job is to really purchase all of these softwares, make sure that the education is accessible. You know, whatever the latest uh, software and equipment that the industry is using, bring it to the school, make sure it's accessible. Uh, apart from that, the ideas and information, uh, are they from uh, school-funded uh, research in development or updating innovation-oriented curricula? Yeah, it's definitely through innovation and working with our company partners. I think... Um, uh -huh. You know, a lot of schools would typically approach building their curriculum through their faculty. We prefer to use our company partners. They know what the demand the is experience. out there. Yeah, they have the experience. Mm. So we bring some of them to teach in the school, but we, they also help us through just every year sitting down with us, letting us know what's the latest. What should we bring in? What should we buy? You know, um, Using that information, real world data from the industry bringing it to the classroom. So you have 2,000 students at the moment in your campus in Camuning, Quezon yes, City. Yes. How many graduates do you churn out every year? Yeah, so um, we're, we're expecting to hit about 30 to 35 percent graduating. You know, unfortunately, that number is low just because of the financial impact that the pandemic had on a lot of our students. You know, some had to stop and delay. And but, do all of your graduates get a job immediately upon graduation in the various fields of multimedia arts, 3D animation, web design, and mobile game development? Yeah, we have a very high uh, placement rating of about 50.7% in our latest batch, which means to say that 50.7% of our graduates are fully employed on the day they march for graduation. Can you not give a us year an later. example of where they end up? Do they end up with your uh, partners? Yes. Or do they end up in multinational companies? Yeah, various. Uh, we also have um, some of our company partners are also based overseas. Mm. So uh, the tendency, uh, uh, the, the normal experience would really be taking their internship with a company partner and hopefully being absorbed by that company partner. Um, comp our company partners really are from uh, software development firms, the mm. top development firms in the Philippines animation studios, foreign uh, overseas-based companies that really offer jobs in these fields. And briefly, being a technology-driven uh, school, what is uh, your take right now on artificial intelligence and these uh, NFTs or non-fungible tokens? Yeah, well, the NFTs is a different topic altogether, but I'll, I'll, stick, my, I'll stick to AI. Artificial I think intelligence. AI is really just something very, very exciting. You know, Again, every time a new piece of technology comes in, we, from a school's perspective, always view it as an opportunity we're always looking for ways of how is this technology going to help us, help our students close the gap again, you know, give them a fighting chance. Remember, it's just, uh, it's as simple as the internet. But back then, you know, if you, wanted to, if you wanted to be exposed to the brightest minds of Ivy League schools in the U.S., you'd have to be lucky enough to be enrolled in one. But in this day and age, you know, just go to the internet. You know, you can easily access them. Same with AI. I think this tool, very, very powerful our teachers are all on it. I personally am using it heavily. Um, our students are heavily exposed to it. And I think it will help everyone close the gap again. Embrace it. Yeah, embrace it. Definitely. Rather than fight it. Definitely. Thank you so much for joining us. Sherwin O, oh, the president of CIIT College of Arts and Technology. Thank you.